It is Tuesday night. It is 8 o'clock. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at, and I'm here with you. It is Buddy with the DJ Roundtable and our great amount of DJs here. Uh, we're also welcomed here by a returning guest DJ, Mr. Dixon himself, all the way from the great state of Ohio, and also music teacher as well. We were talking just a little bit before uh, the show, talking a little bit about, uh, you know, he um, had luck in his plate, not only DJing, but also teaching the next generation the gift and love of music. And again, thank you so much for everything you do there, sir. DJ Cool Thing, he's back from his vacation. And also he uh, survived Sam's Corner again. And uh, DJ Cool Thing, you need to turn it down. He was told before to start his gig to turn it down, which I, I don't understand that because he didn't play any music. But, you know, turn it down anyways. Uh, <laughs> as always, my other two brothers from Other Mothers, DJ Brantley and DJ Salsas, Matt Frawley from California, and Brentley all the way from, from here and now living up in Wisconsin beyond the Cheddar Curtain up north. And also, one other thing also, you guys out there, I got a new mic. Tell me what I sound like. Tell me how I sound. If I sound great on the video, if I sound a little better, a little clearer, uh, a little bit more oomph to it or a little more oomph to my voice, hopefully I do. Hopefully you hear it loud and clear and you're not blown out by it. So with everything going on, um, we had a question come in. We actually had a couple of uh, comments and question come in. Um, First thing first, um, this right here is from a DJ who always answers and says stuff all the time. And he said, good video. This is regarded to the last episode we did on 5-9. Good video. Here's a topic for the round table. So here's something that we'll, ta we'll tackle tonight. Uh, is there really a big difference between the brand name lights and the Chinese lights? Does a client even notice? I have used both na brain na uh, brand names and Chinese lights. Some look exactly the same and probably made in the same factory. True. Uh, I like buying uh, Tylenol instead of Costco brand. It's like buying Tylenol instead of Costco brand of acetaminophen. Uh, made in the same factory, but paying more for the name. Is that what we're doing with the name brand lighting? Okay, so... I also, the other thing just came out this past week, and I told I talked to Matt real quickly, just really quick. I don't know if you guys saw or not, Rick Webb came out. Hey, what's a Diablen? Uh, Rick Webb came out um, with the uh, pixel lights, or you could say tube lights, kind of like the Asteras. And the he had demo, he had video, he had live interaction for the video being played and stuff like that and the lights look pretty cool but i want to ask a few questions like how the app is and he said the app is basically equal to the remote control um so it's not really really yes, as well, nice no, as the astera uh it's very basic uh it does some cool stuff it does some cool things the base of the unit, uh, I think I think uh, Matt has gotten those lights before. The base unit, I think that's where the light actually, the battery lives in the brain. Am I correct, Matt? Well, mine, mine are different. Mine are similar to the Asteras. They're only 180 degrees, and the battery yeah. and housing is all on the backside. So there is no black thing at the bottom. Um, his are different, and they're not – he didn't come out with them, like both lighting, whatever brand they are, like – these tube lights that, that he has, they've been out for about a year now. Um, his, just, his both lighting company just decided to start carrying them. But Mars Light, which I think was the first one to make them, um, theirs are actually IP rated. And uh, I've, like, I've seen those. The difference is um, what you're getting with an Astera or a Wellstix is a cinema and film-ready light. The colors are true colors with a smooth gradient. Um, and as you see in videos, if you look at videos of the Asteras and the Wellsticks versus videos of Rick's lights or even my lights, the tube lights, they're all like ours are all washed out. Like the colors don't look good on video. They don't look like they emit light. Sure. But like, you know, an Astera or Wellsticks is meant for like a music video or a movie. And you can actually see the richness of the color. So that's like the biggest difference. Um in my opinion, but like, if you don't have the money for the 
Yeah, sure. The tube lights are cool. His seem to give off a good amount of light. Um, mine are more just eye candy. They don't really produce a ton of light like in front of them. Um, I would think if you have the ones he has on stage, though, you're going to get blinded because it's 360 degrees. So that same light that's going forward is going to go right back at you. Uh, but and at, they're kind of cool. Who has, I mean, I, 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 I yeah. As someone who has the Asteras, cool. um, and I was watching the video and stuff like that, watching again the, the 180 degrees versus the 360 degrees, I do appreciate that. And the colors, I, I have some videos up on YouTube of the Astera lights. Um, they will cast pretty far, and they will. Hey, what's up, DJ Fire? They will cast pretty far, and they will give light. Is there a difference between Chinese knockoff lights and Astera's? Yes, I, the app is much more intrusive, uh, in, in, intrusive far as allowing you to do a lot with it. Programming, pixel mapping in the app. You can reprogram stuff and redo stuff in the app on Astera. Is the app on the both lights as good as the Astera? Everything I'm hearing, no. Um, so that's one of the things. But there are other brands out there for lights in general, uh, one of them being U-King. Uh, the U-King lights, um, I have a set of the small little U-King lights, which, again, uh, I did a unboxing of, and I have used them on a few gigs and I've actually really enjoyed the little mini U Kings. They're equal to the um, um, American DJ. Uh, but the thing is that the one big takeaway, and Matt can tell you this with the Chinese Lightning, because he's bought directly from Chinese manufacturers, you don't get the warranty and you don't have that service. So if something happens, you can't, you don't have a recourse to send it in for a replacement repair. Mr. Dixon. How about you for lighting? Do you have, do you buy name brand? Do you buy the Chinese stuff? What do you do? I, what do you feel for lighting? I pretty much stick with the um the name brand. I'm a show on um, show bay guy, but I have bought a couple of off brands from Amazon. I have like the was it O P P S K up lights. <laughs> I pretty much use that as like um behind my facade or if I'm during the stream you know, light up the room. And then this year I got some column array speakers. And so um, I bought, this is another knockoff that really, they really don't have a, a name, but it's a bar that I can like put magnets on it and it can sit on the side of the column array and then I can still do the um, floor lights. But other than that, I stick with the name brand. And that's one of the things also to look at is what you're buying, what you're looking at. Even the name brand stuff has a failure rate. And uh, again, uh, Chave, American DJ, uh, both lighting, uh, even Rockville. I have Rockville rock wedges, which I like for up lighting because they're very, they're very easy to deal with. Uh, they have their own wireless uh, DMX system, very easy to work with. Uh, they sell replacement batteries for it very inexpensively versus I have Chave as well. And my half my Chave's batteries are bad. And to buy the battery, they want almost equal price to the light itself. So it's like I I, I buy the the rock uh the rock wedges and I'm pretty happy with them. Now are they the best ever? Eh, you know, they're there's I, I like I use the sound active here and there for certain things. It's it's not bad. Um their battery life is pretty good. Their quality is about equal to the Chave and stuff like that. And again, as a DJ, we do knock things around, beat things up. Um, and the other thing also is that uh, they've changed the design a little bit over the past few years. But you got to look at the price, you know, $800 for six lights in a rechargeable case with wheels. I have three sets, you know, so I have 18 of those lights and probably 15 of the 18. Um you know, are 100%. I have two which are just got dent where the uh, buttons work. So I got to use a remote control on it. Uh, but I have them set for DMX. So that way they just, you know, follow what the other ones do. And I have one with bad battery, which I got to replace the battery on, which is I have an extra battery right, right, right next to me. So I just got to do that. But, you know, having the Asteras, the LED lighting between the Asteras, the colors and stuff like that, is that there is a difference between the two. Um, there is a difference between performance. There's a difference in software. And even in, like, I have Chave uh, moving heads. 
they work differently than the U King moving heads. You I get the U Kings are small little ones. They're ten watt LEDs versus I have the the three sixties in white, uh, Chave and ten meter spots. And you know there those are you look at a big difference between the two. But the quality of the Chave, I feel it's much higher. And again, you had the warranty of Chave. DJ Bradley, I know you have been doing this for quite a while too. Are you more of the Chinese light guy? Or are you more the name brand guy? I know you do some pars and stuff like that and for gig bars and so forth. Hey, what's up, Adrian E? Uh, when it comes to my lights, I'm not, for example, when everybody's talking about the color arrays, I'm not generally th- too concerned with it, so to speak. Every light is going to get close to the color you want. There's not going to be any exact science. I'm making it exactly perfect to a bride's dress. To a groom suit. It just doesn't happen very often, especially in the world of LEDs. So when it comes to my lights, yeah, I do prefer Chauvet for a lot of it. I'm not going to lie, but when it came to my up lights, uh, the battery power ones, the Chauvet ones my apart- business partner has, I couldn't justify spending that kind of money on them. And knowing people have the problems like batteries die pretty quickly, you have to change them, getting them is impossible to get a battery. So on and so forth. So when I got my first sets of uh, wireless uplights, I went Rockville, Rockville Best Par 50s. And I've had them, gosh, three years now. And there's only one that's given me an issue, and it's not a bad. I think it's got like a half hour less lifetime than any of the other ones. No, no one's going to notice at the end of a day when they're that drunk if one dies at a certain point in the night. But when oh, I saw- like lost Matt. <laughs> When I saw the top, when I got my uh, cold sparks and a few other odds and ends, I went to top lighting in China. And I've got to say, for the price point, the case and everything, the two sets I've got, it was well worth it. They, and because everybody's using like, you know, DMX programming, sound switch. I'm a record box DJ. I just, pro, you know, tell the app what light I've got. And what I want to use it for, and everything else is taken care of. And I, just like the Rockfields, just like Chauvet, or any of the other ones I've picked up, they all work flawlessly with the Record Box app. And with a couple of the latest upgrades, how you can change scenes on the fly if you want to, they respond just like anything else would. My moving heads, the the only thing I don't like about uh, Record Box lighting and moving heads is you can't activate any gobos you have in the moving heads. Which, okay, one small thing, I don't think anybody needs to see a biohazard symbol floating on the ceiling or the floor in a wedding, but nevertheless, you, that's the only downfall I've had with it. And when it comes to like my, my light bars, um, amazingly a company I ran across, Atkins Professional Lighting out of Ohio. Those tri-beams I've, uh, I've got, um, both of the bars I'm using behind my front board, depending on what color scheme I need, they've been rock solid, and I've been using those now. The tri-beams I started getting a year and a half ago, and they've wireless, battery-powered, but when I use those, I don't activate the DMX on them. I use those as static colors for the head table for the most part, just because it accents it looks really sharp on a head table, and there's no reason that at any given point in the time that they're of the night, they're going to be sitting there, and I'm going to need to make those lights move. By the time you're making the lights move, the attention is drawn to the dance floor. Yeah, and but- that, that's that's one of the things with you know with lighting, and especially when you're using apps and stuff like that, or using software. It's how those lights integrate, and sometimes the manufacturers of the software, be it Chave, be it uh, Pioneer with Record Box, be it Sound Switch, be it whoever it is you're using, even the app from the manufacturer itself they sometimes lag behind what the product could do. Now, I will say as an Astera user, Astera app is updated and they do more and more things. And it seems like since, you know, since I've got them now almost a year, they've done a couple upgrades and it seems like they last a little bit longer than they have in the past and doing the same things with them. So it is interesting. DJ fire has joined us and it looks like he's waiting for a train. He's at Amtrak station. And where are you taking a train to? I'm not actually. Um, this is one of the places I like to go and I just want to 
relax it's peaceful they've remodeled everything and it's down kind of in a valley so oh. there is a train there is a train coming but um i'm not getting on it <laughs> oh, okay i was gonna say you, you're train spotting i like to train spot once in a while too i like to go uh where i grew up in the city of chicago there was a still is a, a metro a metro station which is the commuter rail system which also there, now i'm standing right on the go watch it <laughs> and we're down there don't get hit <laughs> green but light down there says there's one coming oh, well don't get hit but, man don't don't get hurt just uh stay out stay off the tracks you know but i always like doing a little track well, you guys here. you guys were starting i was watching from the beginning there i was actually at walmart earlier but uh when y'all started your show here um i did i i thought the rick webb lights were kind of cool um the sound active modes were like the first one he showed in his video was cool. I think the price point is way, way too high for those. They're like what two hundred and fifty dollars a piece, which is cheaper than Astera's. The Astera, yeah, that's I, well, I will say, right. But I still, I mean, you're talking two grand for a set of. I mean, how many of those come into a charge case? What do you get? Eight. eight? Yeah, that's that's two. I mean, that's two grand. When you're sitting where I'm at, and I am for six lights with two soft cases, uh, the bridge wireless transmitter and tablet, I'm five grand in. I mean, if, if I'm going to spend two grand, I'm going to get, I mean, I could get four Intimidator 160s or, well, actually, I could get five Intimidator 160s for that. I think, and I could get four 260s. I could get two 360 Intimidators from Chauvet, which is what but I've been the, wanting. The, the look is the look is totally different. And the the, yeah. the the tube lighting, the two the pixel lighting, if you can map them right, you can do a lot of crazy stuff. Especially, uh, there's another DJ who I'm trying to get onto the show here that uh, does a lot with the uh, uh, pixel mapping and does some crazy stuff. But the the question to you is, uh, which we had a question. I, I, I'll go ahead and give you the Cliff Notes version. Do you prefer name brand uh, lighting or do you prefer uh, Chinese uh, brand? Because I know you deal with a couple of Chinese manufacturers, but you have a lot of name brand stuff too. Which do one do yeah, you I've prefer? I've got Chave, I've got some ADJ, and I've got some Chinese stuff from Sheds, which I'm kind of getting kind of mad at Sheds. The new person working for Sheds is not as good as Ava. Um, I don't know if DJ Solstice is still on here listening, but uh -oh. I know they he uh -oh. said they were sending him some lights or something. Well, but yeah, because yeah, we just lost him not that long ago, so he's not listening. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> but uh, hopefully, so back. they um, they were supposed to be sending me one of their new weird moving heads that uh, it's some other company that they're carrying, but. He messaged me almost 30 days ago and told me it would be 45 days to get to my house because uh, they had to build them because they were out of stock. I was like, how in the world it said you had tons of them online? And then I messaged him again a couple nights ago and asked him what an update was, if they had shipped them yet or what. And he said, no, it still needs about another 45 days to get to your house. I'm like, so 90 days, that's a little retarded. You know, Ava was sending me, if she didn't have something, she was sending me something else. So it's, you know, I I don't see me getting much more from Sheds anytime soon. It's just, I mean, there's stuff, that new moving head I got with the, uh, was it the 160 moving head? I almost thinking about buying another one of those, but how long am I going to have to wait? I waited almost 24 days for my uh, other box light to show up because, and then it, I was wanting it for uh, the prom and it didn't show up in time. Yeah, and that's so, unfortunately right now still um, the supply chain is pretty messed up. Uh, Hunter, what about you for for lights? You do more uh, name brand, or do you do uh, more you know off brand? U King Sheds. There's a lot of brands out there. Yeah, I pretty much have a mixture of both. I have some Matt Owl Park cans. I got a U King battery powered Park can from when I had a white table scram. I used that to light up my table. I have some Rock Park 50s, the non-battery powered ones where you just plug into the wall. And the pack of eight allows you to daisy chain each light to one single outlet. <laughs> and then I moved up to the Wash FX 2s from Chave, and I don't really see a difference. Because I'm not using DMX or anything fancy like that. I'm mostly using the remote control or the buttons on the lights themselves. 
what, what's funny with remote controls, sometimes they'll work for other brands. So you'll get an American DJ or Chave remote and go up to someone else's light. And a lot of times the frequency is the same frequency. It's, you know, it, it will do certain things. Sometimes you go up to another light, it'll do nothing. Sometimes you go to it, you go hit blue and it's red. You know, it, it's, it's different, uh, I guess, uh, different addresses in the software itself uh, from the light. But it is one of the things that, you know, um, I would probably would say that for the most part, the name brand stuff is the warranty, the off brand stuff. It can you just have to watch what you buy here. Here, Matt's back. Uh, you have to watch what you buy, like anything else. You know, if you're buying something from U King or you're buying something from Sheds, if they have a warranty, if you could follow that warranty, be it through either Amazon or directly through them or whatever, I think that's the big thing. But if you're buying something that's a John's Lighting, I just started a business t yesterday and I have, you know, I'm selling you a light and the light comes and the light works for six weeks. And you go to a gig and not working, you go try to return. Hey, oh, I'm sorry, all sales are final, no returns. Yeah, I was cheaper, but did I give you the right amount of service? Or is it, you know, okay, hey, I'll just buy another light, you know? And that's one of the things I know, again, Matt has bought lights directly from China. And uh, if the light goes bad, you know, he's it, there's, there's, it's, it's hard to ship it back because it costs so I, much to ship it back. I buy everything from China with my city credit card. Uh, because Citibank has a ridiculously strong protection for disputes or in favor of the consumers. So uh, anytime there's an issue and the supplier is being difficult or they're like, oh, take it to a take it to a micro soldering shop or this or, you know, anytime they ask something stupid like that, I just file a claim. And 99 percent of the time I win um, because Citibank is a U.S. based company and they understand that, you know, China peddles a lot of crap. Um, but you got to find just good suppliers. Like, that's why. That's why I don't really order from too many unheard of ones, unless it's for like I'm I'm buying a uh, like half a container worth of LED foam sticks. You know, those it's an LED foam stick. It's a disposable item. It does. It just needs to work, and it does it doesn't need to last longer than one event. They're disposable, so I just I'm gonna go with whoever's cheapest. Um, so, but other stuff Matt, that you're trying to invest in. It's Matt, different. did you ever get your moving heads from sheds that you ordered? Yeah, or I, that, did you? I did. I made a whole video, and then they're like, we love the video, but we want to see it in action. And I'm like, well, I can't do that with just one. So they just sent me a second one. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's, they're like, we that's, love, they were like, we love your videos and your lighting. And I'm like, well, then you know that I need two to make it symmetrical to do anything. And uh, they're like, okay, we'll send you a second. I couldn't get them to send me a flight case, though, unfortunately. That's I wish I would have known you were wanting some of those. I had a full set of those. Uh, the flight case, they will ship by boat, and it takes. Uh, they will not ship by air. I, I try every time I've been like, send me a flight case. Okay, we'll ship by boat. Why can't you put it in an airplane? It ain't gonna weigh that much. <laughs> Volume. I don't know. Yeah, yeah it's, I, uh, it's, it's, I will it's cost. say, uh, my last wedding. Uh, you had a look-alike at my wedding. Like, even DJ Mike James was like, yeah, that looks like DJ Solstice. Without yeah, I, mean, yeah. I watched your gig log, and, and I, I heard the shout-out. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just saw that guy. Yeah, yeah you getting a little older, but, yeah, the haircut, the kind of look. I'm like, yeah. From a distance. From a distance, yeah. I could see it. If you had the glasses yeah. on, yeah, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be like Matt's, like, older brother or maybe, you know, a relative of some kind, you know. I get like, yeah, hey, he's he's in, he's in Matt's family somehow or another, if, but you know, uh, it's, it's fun. If I don't get hit by this train rapidly approaching behind me, well, I'll still be here. <laughs> don't get hit. Well, it's stay away from the train too. tracks. <laughs> it's the freight train. So it's probably gonna get loud for a second. Is that <laughs> Union Pacific or Canadian National? Or uh, I won't know until it gets here. Union Pacific or uh, BNSF. Room. Yes, I am he's a moving. train guy, <laughs> <laughs> Mister Dixon. Question for you, sir. Uh, um, Union oh, Pacific and North or Southern. Uh, when you uh, when you do your lighting and stuff like that, and you uh, go through stuff and uh, you look at what you're setting up there for lighting and so forth, and you're setting your gear up and you're setting everything up. When you sit back, do you take a minute or two and turn everything on to just check and make sure everything's running? how everything looks and the colors are that real quickly and then shut everything down or do you just wait till the dance floor opens up and then, you know, kind of 
I hope for the best. How do you do it? No, I check before I uh, turn it on because I don't like surprises. You don't like surprises? No, no, no. Like surprises. <laughs> <laughs> no. But I'm trying to get into um, use a sound switch with my um, my dance floor lights. So that's what I'm trying. So I try to set everything up and practice with it. And when I get there, try to make sure everything is on. And you you're using are you using Serato or? I'm using Serato, but I'm using Sound Switch, and I bought the Sound Switch controller. You what was it Control One? So yeah. I've been playing with that, so it's been pretty good. It, it looks it looks cool, and uh, ADJ's got one too. I just saw um, a video the other day on YouTube. Uh, a guy had it has a bigger LCD uh, touch screen, which was pretty cool, and it has a lot of the lights program in there. And I, I know that. Um, like again, uh, DJ Brentley using uh, Record Box. It has uh, some presets in there for lighting and stuff like that. Uh, I, 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 would, I would wish that you know Virtual DJ and Serato would go on that a little bit too. But I know Virtual DJ and Serato had stems before Record Box, so it's it's like you know one gives you this, no one gives you that, and it's like you know like they're all comp competitors of each other. But they all work very similar. But you always hope that you know it works well with whatever you're using. So I, I know cool thing. I know that you you know you use sound active mode and you go through the remote control and if yeah. you do upline. You probably hit the color on the, in the remote or go and program the side to hit the yeah. color. But when you do that, do you do you do a test before uh, everyone gets there? Do you do run a check to make sure it's working? I do, and I leave it on the entire for the entire gig. You don't turn the lights off? Nope. I just leave them on the entire time. Okay. And then I turn them off at the end of the night. Like when I'm okay. packing up at night. So, like, daddy-daughter dance, first dance, mother-son, you have all the lights on? Yep. Okay. What about uh, you, DJ Brentley? Do you leave the lights on? Or do you turn the lights off, for, especially if you're a special dance? Do you check everything, turn them off? And maybe have maybe some basic up lighting going on, and then when a dance floor opens, really turn the lights on, or what, how do you do that? You're muted, by the way. Sorry. But yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I actually, when it comes to my dance lights, I don't turn them on until after the spotlight dances. And it's also why I'm not using like any derby lights or like the Shove Kintas or anything like that, so they don't produce those dots. And with that, most of the photographers I work with, they ask me to either A, use white washes or not have lights on at all, preferably no lights. So in my, you know, week, my meetings with my couple, oh, you know, 30 days out of when we're talking, we go over lighting, I let them know how the lights are gonna run until after the, you know, spotlight dances. Once they're going, I'll turn them all on, but I'm still not using, I'm not using lasers. I've actually added a couple of strobes just because a couple, like a, a few of the couples I have this summer want me to blind them a little bit. Cool. Uh, but I'm only like, you see my basic setup. I'm using a couple of uh, Intimidator 150s and uh, eight uh, show base six uh, slim parts and a couple of strobes. Now that's about it. I don't want to hurt anybody with the lights. Moreover, I want to keep it kind of classy looking and not overpowering, just so it does what it's supposed to do, nothing more. If that makes sense. Yeah, it doesn't it makes it makes tons of sense. And that's, you know, one of the things that uh when you're looking at stuff and you're going through things, uh, that's the way I do it too. I, I check the lights, we check stuff beforehand, make sure stuff is going on. But if we're doing up lighting. The up lights, I'll turn on to you know the color that it is and make sure it's not in the way. And uh, you know, I, I after afterwards, usually we have a little bit of talking afterwards. I usually share some pictures, and uh, here in the chill room, uh, not the chill room, uh, the uh, room here, I, I go through it and I talk to them, um, and I go through stuff and show people pictures. And and it, it's 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 one of the things that. I like doing that because I want to hear input from other DJs, what they think. And everybody does things differently. There's no right or wrong here. There's not a gotcha question. This is how everyone does those things differently. Uh, DJ Adrian Yee says, both Chinese, Rockville, and Chave. So he's kind of kind of like me. But I've, I've, you know, 
a stair in there. So I have a German company in there. <laughs> so Matt, about what about you? Do you uh, do a uh, like a, a a check of the lights, see everything is beforehand, and then keep the lights off, and then you know you have some lighting going on, and then when the dance floor opens, you turn the the big lights on and the lasers and. You're muted again. Uh, he's, you're muted. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, with uh, <laughs> everyone's muting themselves today. It's uh, not me, folks. <laughs> trying to be common courtesy here. Um, with with Freestyler, which is what I use, you can set like default values to start up on. So I have all of my lights set to a static red. So that way, once we start the lighting program, we start turning on everything that's wireless and everything that's wired in. If it goes red, that means that it's ready to go. So. I make sure all the lights work and then I set like a room default. So I always do a couple little buttons just to test, make sure everything's in range. Then I do like a room default for up lights and then I have shortcut buttons to turn off my uh, crowd washes and strobes and all that other stuff. So, um, I mean, you know me, my, my lighting show is, is better than most. So, um, yeah, <coughs> always make sure to check. <laughs> I, 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 don't I would never, leave, I would never leave something in sound active. There is no such thing as sound active in the Solstice Entertainment catalog. Well, no, again, you're doing full DMX versus cool thing. He's like, I'm yeah. not going to do DMX, and he's doing sound. I would probably say half the DJs out there you do, learn sound, do DMX. The other half do sound active. I kind of do half and half. I do Especially sound if, you're, if you're if you're doing Chinese lights, their sound active modes suck. You have got to have DMX. They're all designed to be. I mean, here's 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 a normal man. Well, you can't see it, but there's a manual here, and you got to learn how to translate. Um, strobe speed spikes. Oh, sorry, sprobe s p r o b e. <laughs> well, I, I again, mean. English is not their first language, and uh, you know, I, I, I will say one thing that I like, you know, for special dance, especially the bride and groom's first dance. I think having a spotlight, maybe at like sixty percent brightness yeah. on a moving head, shining at them, that makes for awesome picture, especially if it's a little hazy. Um, and then you've got low lying fog in there. That makes for great pictures. I, I'm in the I'm in the process of trying to, you know. Well, I mean, I could. I would just have to set a totem with, you know, movers that I can control and set my other ones. Because y'all say you use you don't use sound active. Well, I don't use sound active. I use some of the auto modes because some of the sound active modes in those two sixties are too fast. That makes the head move too fast. I use a little bit of everything, a little bit of auto, a little bit of sound active. I use a little depending on what I want. And I remember back in twenty twenty, there was all the first dances. And stuff, I put on a blue light, especially for all the slow dance. I would do a blue light. I, I think Chave putting those totem modes in all their newer stuff and. And uh, all that, I think that's helped a lot of the, the beginner DJs, you know, because the, the lights don't stay behind you. That's another thing with Chinese moving heads. If you run them in sound active or auto mode, they're going to end up a lot behind you or on the ceiling. They're not going to be on the dance floor. You Any type of Chinese stuff, you're going to probably have to DMX because yeah, their auto programming sucks. I'm actually going to try DMX at my 10-year reunion by getting the Chave OB3 because it's much better and easier laid out than a lot of other DMX controllers. I've tried like my Rock Force 384. So I mean, a manual controller is a lot trickier than software, I'll say. I mean, but you can try it. Yeah. You also got to make sure that your, your lights <laughs> have the channel mode that the, the controller is. So, like, if... If an Obey three or four only has four channels, that means that like if your heck if your wash effects have six, then there's going to be two channels that it won't know what to do with. You make a, oh yeah, I'll be sure to put them in the three channel. Yeah, just make sure to put them in the right channel mode. Then you should be fine. Yeah. Um, so Adrian Adrian E has a couple of things here. He said that uh, check the lights before the event starts. So you know, run the lights, make sure everything's working correctly, which that's what you want to do. Leave them off until the uh, after the formal dances are done. Uh, then when I open the dance floor, flips the switch, gets me going. Um, and he does, uh, uh, on off. So he does the lights on for the, uh, after the special dances, you know, he turns the lights on, but until then they're off. So that way it's, you know, whatever uh, you're up lighting or whatever he's doing like there, he's doing that. Yeah. Here's the thing with my rock par fifties, there's no such thing as on and off. It's just unplug and plug back in so if i plug it in it stays on the entire time you have a remote control for them 
uh, not for the Rockvilles, but for the Chavez, I do. Because I, I know on the on the Rockville, the ones I have the the, the wedges, they have a, a dark mode. Yeah, so no, no. I'll turn some of them on, on the dark mode if I'm not doing uplighting. Just they're on, they're ready to go, but they're on dark mode until you know we're ready to do what we need to do. Oh man, so we're we're going through these pretty quickly. Um, one of the things I saw um, comment wise, someone was talking in the comments, and I, I appreciate when people talk and watch the um, watch everything and watch the premiere and stuff like that. And I, I thank you guys uh, out there watching it. I saw someone talk about in the comment section that they were using DMX cables for sound. <laughs> For speaker cables and you can no don't you can't listen. Don't I listen about this. yeah i talked about this on my past stream I don't said, listen to what people say i'm a professional i've never heard yeah that was completely I didn't, I didn't think you could use dmx for you XLR. can they're completely yeah, interchangeable that, there's just a horrible. difference in impedance which you're not even going to notice unless you're running a concert style festival show like you can use dmx for xlr it'll sound the same It'll perform the same. You can use uh, XLR for DMX. It'll be exactly the same. Yeah, Trust here's me. What, I use yeah, them all the time. Yeah, yeah here's what I whatever, said. My stream. Yeah, here's what I said. Whatever, whatever I pick up first from my cable bin, that's what I'm using. Uh, wow, we we got we got war going out here. <laughs> want a war. Uh, that is so <laughs> dumb. Using DMX for uh, for an XLR connection that is just so dumb. It's it fine. Be- yeah, <laughs> I, I yeah, think if you, I, I, I think if you do it by accident, you know it happens here and there. You, I, I always have everything marked separate. Um, what I, I what I, I read is that because <laughs> DMX is a digital signal versus a sound signal, it, the wire, even though it's similar wire, it is a same you know connectors. You're just you run it reverse as far as the connections. What I've always read was if you run sound through a DMX cable, you do have a chance of causing harm to it because the signal is much hotter than a digital signal for lighting. So that's that's where I, I, I saw that. And I'm like, okay. again, by accident, I can see it happening. You know, if you're not, everything's not marked well. Um, I would definitely would say uh, for that person who, uh, who who's doing that and uh Maybe Music Addiction has a different uh, idea, um, or maybe DJ Brentley a different idea, or DJ Fire had a different idea. But I would definitely would say for them to maybe get a tester and test the cables, make sure that they have the right continuity, but also make sure that they uh, may want to replace them and make sure they have just dedicated XLR cables just because playing a safe side. Now, again, if Matt wants to grab whatever cable he wants to grab and use whatever cable that is his business. He could do whatever they're, he wants. If cool thing doesn't want to do that. That's up to, that's up to cool they, thing. Hunter's business is Hunter's business. I'm not telling one how to do their business. I just don't want to see someone make a mistake and cost them money, either on equipment. Mr. Diction, have you ever used uh, you know, a DMX cable in replace of a XLR cable or vice versa? Nope. Too scared. <laughs> I'm there. I'm ready to stick with what is supposed to be go, to, 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 uh, you know, to go with that thing, as opposed to plugging it in and having something happen. I'm like, they're screwed. Okay. Hoping for the best. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I always make sure. Yeah, I always make sure my cables are separate from DMX and XLR, so I don't get messed up. I already know the difference between an XLR and a DMX cable. Even when I was a beginner, I already knew the difference. There is no difference. There is a difference. There's no difference. There's no one discernible for difference. One for lighting. You should know there's, that. You've been a DJ forever. You should know that. I, I, I DJ forever, and I know that you can use any cable interchangeably. Murray, Murray. It's common sense. The, the, the results are in, and it it's doesn't matter. <laughs> no, they're the same kind of cable. Yes, the lie detector test is in, right. and you are go. not the father. <laughs> 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 So I have to oh. have someone in the chat saying that if Matt says it's fine, then it's fine. Oh, he, you're not, his like DMX said, is really nice. He doesn't know what he's talking about. I do. I know <laughs> what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm smarter than any other DJ on this uh, chat right now. I here. mean, I'm Wait, not going to pull any rank or anything, but my degree is in engineering for sound. 
<laughs> and one of the things I learned, yes, you can use one. <laughs> Will it give you a, sig a buzz? Will it not be a clean signal? By all means. They're not meant to be running sound through. They're a completely Definitely. different cable. Sound. Can Just you? Lights. Yes. Have I done it in a pinch? Unfortunately, yes. But when I was running a when I was running a music venue with a real sound system, there was no way in God's green earth I was going to run a DMX cable through that system because I know what kind of sound interference and buzz I'm going to get. It's not worth the headaches. So. And again, every, gonna, every, it just seems like a, I'm not trying to have a fight between everyone. Again, everyone's <laughs> friends here. So, uh, Matt, so again, uh, have I have I missed I'm something? Friends with no one. I am friends with no one. We're acquaintances. We're, <laughs> friends. We're supposed to laugh on here, but buddy, when did you get a new yeah. microphone set up over there? That's you're sounding great. I uh, got oh. it. Uh, let's see here. I got it Friday. What microphone are you using? Um, is it the sure? No, no, no. Um, I gotta look. I'm trying to think what it is. I'm in the process of getting me a new mic. Baby. I I can't see the name, but it's, it's not sure. It's not Audio Technica. It's not Sennheiser. It's uh. You're um, gonna have to show me how you're running your microphone through your computer, though, so I can hook mine up. It is okay. a a Yamaha A six O six mixer it is a six channel USB C mixer right into the computer and you download the drivers from Yamaha and includes a uh, EQ and you can go through digitally and, uh, and adjust everything on the mixer so the mic here and the arm everything I bought from Sweetwater so if you're in the mood or in the market for some stuff I buy a lot of stuff from Sweetwater this is all from Sweetwater if you uh, are looking for the um, what the model numbers, I will share the model numbers with you guys. Uh, the arm, I, I wish I would upgrade to the, the little nicer arm from uh, Gator. <laughs> uh, it's a few bucks more, but uh, it's Sweetwater's XLR cable. It's a uh, Yamaha mixer, and um... <laughs> <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Yeah, it's a so, good uh, thing. Yeah, it's a good it's a thing. PD, yeah. It's a PD seventy yeah. microphone. Yeah, it's a good thing, but he's not using it. Uh, you know what? You yeah, know what we ought to do on camera. here is we ought to get like we ought to trade like like I have my business shirt says DJ Fire. I'm in the process of making a new one. I would love to have a Social Entertainment shirt. I think his logo is badass. Pardon my language, but it's pretty cool. It is. Um, I'd love to have a TBM production shirt. I'd love to have you know. I think we all should have one of you know each other's shirts. I can I, I, can, cool. I can I can arrange that. I can give you a crew shirt with your I name on the front. I would not feel comfortable wearing a Social Entertainment t-shirt i think it'd be cool more. to have like a big wall with everyone's shirt on it behind me, I, I, you would, know? I, would I would send you one hunter i would send you one i would say hunter oh. on. i would actually I'll put, I'll put cool thing on it <laughs> <laughs> but 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 i gotta get you have to wear it but i do want a picture of you wearing it no nah. matt you got any spare shirts over the there guy who treats me like garbage like every second of the day <laughs> what, I, what size are you xl or large uh depends do they shrink Mm, they, they're already shrunk. <laughs> I have some. I have some XLs for a guy that used to work for me, and uh, uh, nobody else that I've hired is an XL. Oh, you got um, all, all, little guys hired they, for you, they, or what, man? Are they cotton or what are they? Yeah, they're all hundred percent. I think they're hundred percent cotton. I don't know. I'll, I'll DM you. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll... Well, what about Mister Dixon? There, do you have? Uh... Do you happen to have uh, T-shirts and and uh, stickers and stuff like? Because I know DJ Brentley, he's got stickers everywhere, all over Lacrosse. I've got, I've got. He, stickers. he rocks out Lacrosse. <laughs> Speaking of, if y'all have been watching, well, yeah, well, DJ Fire's YouTube channel is fastly approaching 500 subscribers, and I'm going to be doing a giveaway on there. Now, the giveaway is also going to get whatever I decide to give away, which I've got a number of things uh, that I've got in the closets that Shed has sent me that I'm not using. Um, so we've got, I'll probably throw a t-shirt in there and I'll probably throw stickers and I'm thinking about throwing a gift card in there as well. So, oh, there you go. All right. There you go. Nice big so pile I'm, of, uh, of gifts. I'm projected to hit 500 the end of next week is what it's showing. So we will see if that happens. <clears throat> that, that'll be cool. That'll be very, very cool. 
So and you, uh, you you know that um like before folks, we we all joke around, we all have fun here. And that's part of the thing with the, with the round table is everybody enjoys themselves and everybody has fun here. And uh it's 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 a brother and sisterhood uh with DJ and we all share that passion and we enjoy uh you know having fun and talking to each other and, and giving our two cents uh, of what we do and ultimately it's it's your decision on what you want to do for your business you know we do recommendations and we tell you what the things that we run into in the past and uh you know hopefully you don't fall in the same pitfalls we run into and you know some of us are very opinionated in certain areas you know the you know certain computers or certain software or, or this that they love and i love that passion from the 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 panel i love yeah. hearing you know people yeah, I, you know yeah. saying I, yeah, the I, best yeah yeah, I just deleted virtual. Here you go, buddy. Here comes so, another train. <laughs> yeah. And guess what, everyone? I deleted virtual DJ because it froze up on me at Sam's Corner. I didn't even, you didn't even do that. So. It, it could happen. That could happen in Strato. That could happen in Recordbox. That happens. You know, yeah, software. I used Recordbox, and it didn't really let me down for the nine hours I was DJing at Sam's Corner. You got to get a new laptop. I think that Mac. Oh, I don't need a new laptop. This one still works. And I just don't have the money right now to get a new laptop. That's fine. Again, and you're you're working hard, and and uh, I know not in, what uh, two two months you'll be at the fireworks store. Are you doing your normal DJ uh, on the Fourth of July oh, or Third of July? Well, it depends on if my mom's working at that big store or not. She might be working at a small store, which means I might be working at Sam's Corner for Fourth of July. So there may not be a fireworks store gig log this year. Well, there you go. But again, hopefully, uh, depending on where she's at, if she's working either one, you get to go out in a rock. I know you rock that corner very well at the fire, the oh, big yeah. fire store. And they seem to enjoy. They tell me I do a good job, especially when they're walking out the door. They say good job. They say good job. There you <laughs> know. And that that's the fun. That's the that's the fun part. I see the when I watch the gig logs, I see the fun you're having, and I see the fun that people are having, the smiles on their faces, and that I feel that's what all of us DJs want to do is make sure that. You know, whatever we're doing, if, if if you're a bar DJ, if you're a club DJ, if you're a wedding DJ, whatever you're doing, your guests, your uh, you know, your clientele is happy at the end of the night, and that's the most important thing is that if they feel you're doing a good job. That's what it's about. You know, we could all nitpick about cables or nitpick about you know you didn't do this, do that, or whatever. But that doesn't matter at the end of the day. It matters at the end of the day what the client and who the ones paying you wants to have and again i may teach dj brentley about him quick mixing i don't believe in it he may teach me that i got a long mix and i i, I stink or whatever it's again it's jokes between us you know uh <laughs> it's it's us laughing and having fun but at the end of the day i have respect for everyone here on the panel and that's why they're all here and especially the, the guest djs uh like mr dixon coming in and you know we're uh, dj race is going to be coming in uh we just had you know other guest DJs in here. I try to get them in here every so often just to give you guys a little bit more rounded view of what's going on, different markets, different uh, ideas. That way it's not always the same thing. And I, again, I can't thank you enough, uh, Dwayne, for coming in here and and just spending time with us and hanging out with us in, in the here in the, the DJ round table and answering questions. And it's great hearing from someone, again, like Rory, who's oh, not only a music teacher, but also is a uh, DJ. And again, that other element that's there is that you know a different market different thoughts different clientele and how to do things and it's always great to have you here i can't thank you enough and i can't thank the rest of you guys enough for being here and i can't thank you enough for watching out there in the show with that said uh last question of the night i haven't done this for a little bit it is the what kind no of question what kind of ice cream does buddy like no <laughs> no, no, no no always <laughs> DJ related it's not about buddy Mint oh, I was being, I was being funny. <laughs> I, I, but I, I, I am friends with, I am friends with Nathan on uh, some of the social media, and as well, if you're on social media, make sure you go around and follow these guys on their social media, uh, where they have it open at, like uh, YouTube, Cool Thing Entertainment. DJ Brentley's on YouTube. He's got Facebook. He's got Instagram, and a lot of people have it on there. Um, we we got a question here, guys. Should I go for EB fifties? Yeah, you know, yeah, and and if you are on TikTok, make sure you follow me on TikTok, DJ Cool Thing. There you go. For long well, TikToks around, who who knows I how long TikTok's TikTok. around for? That's only a bad thing. TikTok may not be around for much longer. We'll see. 
We'll see what goes on. But um, EV fifties or EV EX e, e, uh, ETX. So we got some. Should ETX. he go from EV fifties, Evolve fifties, M's, which are the line arrays, or should he go for ETX? Um, you should go for neither because EV is a horrible brand. You should probably go, and I know Matt's going to probably hate me saying this. We should probably go JBL. No, God, it's even worse. <laughs> Just. <laughs> You're gonna spend two thousand dollars on a speaker. Don't like ETX is not the way to go. Go with an RCF. Go with like the Art Nine Twelve or the Art Nine Fifty. Not the Art. Sorry, the. Oh, the if NX you want to get a RC, if you want to get an RCF, then go with the Evolve Fifties. Yeah, but don't don't those RCFs cost about two grand? Yes, but they're a yeah. lot better than an an, uh, an EV speaker. I'll tell you that much. Well, the, well obviously, aren't that lucky to get RCF. We're, some people aren't that lucky. So if you can afford EV, you can afford RCF. Yep. It's crazy. Yeah, e the, uh, if I remember correctly, ETX. I'm not EV it's person, but line. ETX is about equal to RCF uh, lines, and the Evolve 50s are about the same, if not more, than the JH. Or they're kind of between the JHs and the uh, if, um, um, the, the, the higher end line, line arrays. The Evolve sound worse than Hunter's Ions. I was it's hey. Eon. It's Eon. <laughs> He's not what can you say about around me? Those ions have served me well. So yeah, they was, probably the ions probably sound better than the EVs. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm gonna have to agree that I'm just not an EV fan. I oh, the sound is weird. Yeah, I've had electrical issues with them too. I had I had the EKXs for about a year, and I had so many issues with them. And I had replacement models, and they would cut out. They yeah, they just were not good speakers. That's all. So, Dwayne, what, what do you run for speaker wise? Um, the what is it? Uh, EVs, ELX, I think it is. I like those because I have the remote the, on my phone. See, the, the ELX sounds good. I heard the ELX at a conference, and the ELX is the only one of their models that I liked the sound of the speaker by itself. It had a nice low end response. I, is is sound. the ELX a, is that a wood cabinet or a poly cabinet? It's wood. Wood? Uh, I think it's wood. I don't, even, I don't even know. I never really... Only the ZLX is, is plastic. The rest of theirs, I think, are all wood. I think ETX is birch. The other two are like a, a plywood composite. Yeah, the... Yeah. Uh, the if there, it was, M, uh, was it MDX or MDT, whatever uh, the, the material yeah. is. Uh, if it's wood cabinet, it has a richer sound than poly cabinet. It's just weight nature of the beast, but... I will tell you this: that if you if, if if you're looking for a speaker, I'm I'm a big fan for RCF. I know Matt's a big fan for RCF. I have JBL as well. I use JBL. Um, JBL, uh, cool things got JBL. Uh, DJ yeah, Fire's got JBL. To get, I was yeah, supposed I to get some free RCFs from um, that people and guys in New York City. I can't remember what their name. Pro Audio. They were supposed to send me some, but then his boss. Turned him down. Like he was going to send me a line array and a 12. I was like, you've got to send me two if you're going to send me. I can't just use one. Yeah, I've actually heard RC. You know, you know, speaking of RCF, when we were talking about RCF, I actually heard RCF because my old church has like six of those, you know, hanging up from the stage with two JBL subs. And that sounds pretty good with and, a F32 mixer from Behringer. And that, that's the thing is that, you know, again, you know, but. We also have different levels of pricing too. You know, cool thing is more. He, he, again, he does smaller events. He does, you know, you know, small small weddings, small parties, and stuff like that. And you know, his market doesn't support him going out and spending ten thousand dollars on an audio system. Now, DJ Brantley, he is a higher end DJ in his market, so he has a little nicer system, just like DJ Fire. DJ Fire is a higher end DJ in his market. And, you know, the uh, Matt and I know uh, Mr. Dixon is also, uh, you know, he's a higher end as well as myself. Um, so we have a little bit nicer equipment. But um, uh, Adrian E said the uh, EV ELX is a uh, plywood cabinet. OK, so the ELX is a wood cabinet uh, versus a poly cabinet. Again, wood for some things uh, do for certain speakers do sound good. Now, here's one thing. EV is owned by Bosch. So it's a Bosch product. It's a German design product. It, it doesn't matter where it's made; it's where it's designed at. And they really, really do a lot for 
technology and push in the market for it. And again, if, if you look at the little uh, EV speaker that he's came out with for like a lot of guys are using for ceremony, it has a power port right on to plug a microphone into it. So you can actually power a microphone right off the battery on the speaker. So they do have some innovation. They are listening to DJs, which is great. And I help other manufacturers do the same thing. And they listen to us DJs and say, hey, you know, when you hear something or we see something, they, they, they change things around a little bit. And that's what we always try and do is push our technology forward with everything to make sure. So the yes or no question today, which I haven't got a chance to ask that yet because <laughs> we asked about a question on speakers, what we think uh, about speakers. Um, and again, it's, it's all different because different people have different thoughts. So the yes or no question for today. Uh, you know, I'm not going to talk about the DMX versus uh, <laughs> XLR cable. Which one do you use? And we're going to do that. We are past that. Um, but I will ask you this one. Oh, they're asking what the uh, RCF years talk about before Matt. Which, um, I mean, if the RCFs, the only ones I can recommend are the NX series. So I have the NXL 24A, the towers. Um, they have the NX 910, 912, and 915, um, which are basically the best of the best in terms of like a mobile speaker that RCF makes. Um, they are coming out with the 932, which is the 912, but with a three inch driver instead of a 1.75. So it's like double the loudness. Uh, that's not even announced yet. I just heard about that at the end. So the other thing also I think about that is the uh, the art series is the, like the beginning series from RCF. The, the drivers on those are actually halfway decent, even though they're, they're a poly cabinet. There's a difference in sound yeah, because the drivers are different. It ends up with a difference in price. So okay. if you look at ones that Matt has, they're in the higher end price. If you will try to look for a lesser price item, you want to get into RCF, you can go into the more basic RCF and work it from there. But there, the RCF has a very wide um, swath of equipment. So yes or no question for tonight is the next light you buy, are you going to buy a name brand or are you going to buy a Chinese off-brand light? So Mr. Dixon, we're going to start with you. Chinese or name brand light for the next light you buy? Doesn't matter what light you buy, Who's what paying? are you looking at next? Yeah, who's paying? <laughs> I was going to say, I have no idea which everyone is most budget friendly. There you go. I can get their work done. All right. Uh, DJ huh. Fire, what about you? Our right, next light you're going to get is you're going to be a name brand or an off brand light? Oh. Uh... Whatever sheds uh, probably you. gonna be an off brand, honestly. Okay. Matt. You know, I, I don't buy name brand. The only thing I buy name brand are my lasers and my audio and DJ gear and all that stuff. All my lighting is all I think it's all Chinese. Uh, well off Except brand. For, yeah. It's all most of the lights are made in China, so yeah. I don't I, but like lasers, you don't want to buy lasers from China. Um uh, you don't want to buy speakers from china or any of that stuff what what name brand are your lasers man those are uh laser world laser world ds3000 they're a company in switzerland I mean, oh. i'm over there so they're still uh, chinese they're, lights they're just they're, they're I mean, impossible to get now um supply chain and everything i mean my buddy tried to get them and he had to wait a couple months uh he's got to get them at the right time but they're they're great lasers Stuff is opening up, so that's the thing. DJ Brandley, are you gonna get an a off brand or are you can get a name brand next time around? I have no clue. I don't even I really don't need any gear right now except for what I'm kind of scoping out to put in the toad just to fill out my drawers. But when it comes to lights, I've got what fifty up lights, I think. I've got oh, four cool. five Adkins professional tri beams. I can't think of it needing any more of those. I've got no front light boards. I've got, you know, eight moving heads that I only use two or four at the most at a time. I've still got my... So, if anything, I'd be selling something off and maybe grabbing a pair of those really boutique lights. I can't remember the company, but I know they're, they've got, like, those patterns in the lights that have different... I can't remember the name of it. I've gotten an, an email from them. They, they blew my mind. But I'm not looking to spend, like, $800 a light right now on those. So whatever comes up that might be appropriate when I need new gear, be it Chinese, be it Ameri you know, be it main name brand, I'm just not sure. Okay. What about you, Hunter? Are you looking at scoping a new light? And if so, is it going to be a name brand or off brand? 
it's going to be a name brand because if I buy the Chinese ones, they're just going to break in like a year or two. Because I had one now park can that the power cable just broke and because it was made so cheaply. So, yeah, a name brand, mostly Chave. Since I love my Washbox 2s, I might just stick with Chave for, you know, from now until the rest of my DJ career. Oh, there you go. And then uh, I, uh... Avery E. Adrian E has just uh, chimed in. And says most likely, I will buy a Rockville battery uplight. Uh, uh, well, yeah, they got uh, some great. They, again, I I I like their uplights. Uh, I again, I, I use the uh, uh, the wedges, and uh, they have the other ones that kind of look like the Ape Labs. But I'm actually, I'm actually toying the idea a couple Ape Lab coins, uh, which you got run a battery or run power to them via USB just for some lighting by me in certain areas. Um, and yeah, the GJ Brantley is just chiming in in here, replying to uh, DJ Adrian E. Um, they, they, they're all made in China. Uh, you know, they're all pretty much most of the lights are made in China, but I think the manufacturing, uh, the name brand stuff wants a higher quality. They want to have that better quality stuff but again they're probably made in the same factory and again you can see that with some of the lights and how yeah, they are to, with everything yeah because if you want to be a professional dj you have to buy quality stuff that will last you forever or just buy cheap stuff and rebuy it yeah. a couple years later there's two different thoughts you know i, I heard i heard oh, once before from someone good <clears throat> things are not cheap cheap things are not good good I djs ordered, aren't cheap cheap djs aren't good i this know true. i ordered a uh I ordered a Wash FX Hex back. Uh, you probably seen it in my um, what do you call it um, prom video, and it came in a Wash FX Hex box, but it was a Wash FX two. I was not happy. I ended up sending that thing. I used it for the prom and then sent it back. <laughs> I think that's a uh, a really mess up. And Ape Labs are too expensive. They are expensive. The coin lights are not too bad because uh, they don't have a battery, so you need a power source for them. Either a little, either buy your own brick and you run USB, or you have to um, plug them into a power source. So, and again, a couple of them, it's not too bad. But if you're going to light a whole entire room and you do, but again, you got to look what Ape Lab offers, what they give, <laughs> and how their color is, and how their batteries are. They offer a lot, especially their new 2.0 stuff. Again, you 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 gotta look at you gotta weigh that out for any time you buy something. So, again, if you guys are watching this on YouTube, make sure you smash that like button, put critiques, criticism, comments down below. Don't forget to follow one here on YouTube and other social media platforms. Again, I want to thank a, our guest DJ, Mister Dwayne Dixon here, right here from the great state of Ohio, and uh, thank you so much, sir, for coming in here. And uh, we want to thank everyone here in the, tonight on the panel. And again, like I said before, guys, thank you all for watching. Without you guys watching out there, uh, we were just talking to ourselves. I'd be talking to this mic for myself, but <laughs> I appreciate you guys watching. Please like, subscribe, follow, and make sure you follow everyone here if you haven't done so already. Thanks, guys. You guys have a good night. Peace.